Hello my lovely audience, welcome to Time with Aunt Midwife with your beloved midwife Kenneth. Hi, I am glad that we've met again to continue our discussions on how to promote our health. Today, we will be discussing an endemic disease called Lassa Fever, a terrible, horrific disease we all need to know so that we do not fall prey to it. And so to be part of this beautiful family where we learn, have fun, promote our health and vibe you know what to do kindly subscribe to the channel like and share the videos leave your comments tap on the notification bell to get all your updates and click on the video card as well thank you so much for doing that i love you Mwah. to the topic for this discussion lassa fever as i said earlier it is terrible and horrific Lassa fever is a fatal arenavirus infection that occurs mostly in West Africa. Yes, West Africa, and one would ask, what are arenaviruses? Well, I will bring you up to speed on that. Arenaviruses are viral infections that cause bleeding, medically we would say hemorrhage, and organ malfunction. They often result in death. So you know why it is horrific, right? It results in death and it has transmitted by rodent. And so you and I, we are at risk of falling prey to Lassa fever because rodents are domestic and they are mostly found in African homes. As said earlier, it occurs mostly in West Africa and so now Lassa fever outbreaks have occurred in Nigeria, Liberia, Guinea, Benin, Ghana, Sierra Leone and Togo. Although, cases can occur at any time of the year in endemic countries. There is a seasonal peak during February to late March. This is enough reason to suggest that we need to be very careful because we are in the season where Lassa fever is at its peak. What is the causative organism? Causative organism or reservoir of Lassa fever are rats. Yes, rats. I'm so scared of them. Specifically, Mastomys natalensis, Mastomys erythroleucus, and Hylomyscus pamphi. Now, the pygmy mouse has recently been implicated as a reservoir species in West Africa, all of which commonly inhabit houses in Africa, you must be extra careful. Let me reiterate this again. Of transmission, the mode of transmission of Lassa fever is a simple one. Now, we know the reservoir to be Mastomys rat or the pygmy mouse. So, if you come into contact with any of them, either by touching them directly or touching a food, their urine, or their feces, and when they have the virus, then there is primary human infection you'll be infected now you carry the virus so when any other human being come into contact with you and not necessarily the mastomys rat or the pygmy mouse then we are also likely to be infected and that becomes the secondary human infections usually called the human to human transmission and so when we touch your urine your feces your saliva vomitors blood of an infected person which could be you so don't be the person i mean it could be you but it could be me too so we should be very careful we would also as well be infected again there is a nosocomial human to human transmission and when you hear nosocomial we are talking about infections that are being picked up from the hospitals or various health facilities and so when you visit a patient or when you visit a health facility you are at risk of, of being infected with laser fever if you come into contact with anybody with the virus and so you should be very careful this very one actually occurs primarily to our healthcare professionals especially when they don't make use of personal protective equipment example is gloves highly um, effective mask i mean aprons if they don't make use of such they are at risk of nosocomial infection signs and symptoms of lassa fever incubation period for lassa fever is 5 to 16 days Symptoms of Lassa fever begin gradually with progressive fever and I love to make mention of the temperature ranges. A temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or higher 
or you can also say 100 points for Fahrenheit or higher. There is weakness, malaise, there is gastrointestinal symptoms. Here we are talking about nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dysphagia. Dysphagia is difficulty swallowing and there is also stomach ache. Other symptoms of hepatitis may occur such as anorexia, non-specific upper abdominal discomfort, etc. All of the subsequent four to five days, symptoms progress to prostration. Prostration is an extreme physical weakness or emotional exhaustion. And it doesn't only come with the prostration as I've already defined it. This prostration comes with sore throat, cough, chest pain, and vomiting. They end there. No, the sore throat becomes more severe during the first week. Patches of white or yellow exudate may appear on the tonsils, often coalescing with pseudomembrane. Ah, oh, Lassa fever is terrible indeed. More, let's take a look at their blood pressure. Before then, I want to make some comparison here. More blood pressure has a systolic BP of 120 millimeters of mercury or less and a diastolic blood pressure of 80 millimeters of mercury or less. Now, this will help you understand why Lassa fever is horrific because people with Lassa fever rather have systolic blood pressure of 90 millimeters of mercury or less with a diastolic blood pressure of 20 millimeters of mercury or less and a relative bradycardia. Bradycardia is a slow heart rate. That is possible at this point i can tell that you are losing it because then you will see this evident signs of facial and neck swelling and conjectival edema and this occurs in about 10 to 30 percent of patients so you should know that it is actually a common sign or symptom to see occasionally patients have tinnitus tinnitus is ringing or buzzing sound or noise in one or both ears there is epistasis epistasis is bleeding from the nose there is also bleeding from the gums and venipuncture site and also maculopapular rash there is cough and dizziness we are not done if you don't get a needed medication progression to severe illness result in shock delirium rills pleural effusion occasionally generalized seizures pericarditis occasionally occurs and pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium pericardium is a thin two-layered fluid filled sac that covers the outer surface of the heart degree of fever and aminotransferase levels correlate with disease severity and that doesn't even end there sequela also await oh yes if you have been treated from Lassa fever, it means that there is what? Pre-existing disease. Now, another complication is likely to arise and this includes alopecia. Alopecia is loss of hair from the scalp or elsewhere on the body. Iridocyclitis also awaits and that is an acute inflammation of the iris and ciliary body. There, your eyes become very red. There is also the transient blindness. Transient blindness is loss of visual function lasting less than 24 hours. Diagnosis of Lassa fever. Diagnosis is by enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay and also polymerase chain reaction, popularly known as PCR. In fact, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay is also popularly known as ELISA. So if you hear ELISA, it is also right. Prognosis for Lassa fever. Prognosis is generally good. Recovery or death usually occurs 7 to 31 days after your first symptom begins. And so, I made mention that the incubation period is 5 to 16 days. So, right after that 5 to 16 days that we are seeing the signs and symptoms, you have of about 7 to 31 days after the signs and symptoms begins to recover 
all to die, averagely 12 to 15 days. Disease is severe during pregnancy and so my pregnant women should be very, very careful, especially during the third trimester. Most infected pregnant women tend to lose their fetus and so again, Lassa fever is terrific. It is horrific. In fact, we shouldn't fall prey to Lassa fever. Of Lassa fever, there are standard precautions we all need to adhere to so that we do not fall prey to Lassa fever, and that will prevent the primary transmission of Lassa fever. One, avoid contact between rat and human beings. Two, block all rat hideouts. Three, store foodstuffs in rodent-proof containers. Four, cook all foods thoroughly. Five, always wash hands thoroughly and do same after contact with a sick person. Kindly adhere to these. Also, there must be strict isolation because if that is not done, we are likely to um, get infected via nosocomial means when you go to the health facilities. And so, there must be strict isolation, and that will go a long way to help the health workers as well as family members working into any healthcare facility. Also, there must be the provision and the use of personal protective equipment. And here we are talking about gloves, high efficiency masks, aprons, gloves. In fact, we need them at the healthcare facilities. Make sure you make use of them as well, as well as other airborne isolation measures should also be put in place to prevent the contraction of Lassa fever note no vaccine is available for lassa fever treatment usually when it gets to the treatment i do not love to talk much about it because i leave that to the healthcare professionals so all you can do to help yourself is after hearing this video if you are experiencing any abnormality from the normal i mean any sign and symptom if i've seen anything anything which is abnormal can you walk into any nearby health facility to get yourself being examined treated and you will be fine please do not self-medicate you do not know what it could be it could be lassa fever not necessarily by touching the rodent but by touching their feces or urine or by touching any equipment of which they have urinated on and so you should be extra careful today i've extended much of the time this is not the usual time that we end the discussion but because it's lassa fever you know it is very terrific and horrific I do not want any of us to fall prey to it. I am protecting myself, so please protect yourselves as well. Thank you very much for your love, for subscribing to my channel, for sharing the videos, and for learning. We shall meet again. Time is fast spent, but I love you for watching to the end. We shall meet again. Take care of yourselves. I love you all. Mwah. Bye.